Hello friends, it's Kat from Yam Yam Kapow. Not sure if y'all know this because I've really only mentioned it like once on my channel, but every time I test out a material that's inexpensive, especially for whatever it is, I always put it in a playlist called Trash or Treasure. When I reviewed the Mead and Watercolor Paper, which is also part of the Trash or Treasure series, I mentioned that for its price range, I preferred the Fluid 100 series cotton watercolor paper. Both brands are under $15 US on Amazon, and the Fluid one is actually even more affordable than Meaden, which is a bit of a shock. For those of you who don't know about my love affair with the handbook watercolor travelogues, then it might surprise you to one, find out that I love them and always have one in whatever bag I have with me, and two, handbook and Fluid are made by the same company. Well, they were, anyway? I recently noticed that the branding switched from Global Arts Materials, the previous master company, over to Speedball on a new handbook journal I got. So up until a couple of weeks ago when I noticed, Fluid, Handbook, and Global Arts Materials were all weaved through one another like the fibers of the paper they make, indistinguishable from one another unless you looked ridiculously close. Throwing Speedball in there? No idea what that means for the paper overall, but regardless, the point here is, this is some paper that has gotten a lot of mileage on the market. The cotton watercolor paper I'm using today is different than the cellulose paper in the journals by a long shot. And while I absolutely head over heels love the handbook travelogue journals, I merely like the cotton watercolor blocks. Can't tell you why, just sometimes you feel the way you do even if it doesn't make sense. Neither of these is categorically the best paper out there, but they are still pretty darn affordable and work well. The cellulose paper especially works well, and truth be told, I actually think I like it more than Fluid's cotton paper, mostly because I think it has more sizing on it, which as we discussed in the Meaden video, does matter. One of the biggest problems I had with the Meaden paper is that you couldn't lift on it at all. No softening of edges, no removing color, nothing, nada, no movement whatsoever. On the fluid paper, specifically the cotton one, you can, though it's not like you can really pull off a ton of the color super easily, you at least can pull some of it up, and that's an improvement for me over none. Just like that Meaden video, I used the Sennelier watercolor palette that got built in my dice roll palette video. Someone had asked if the colors in the palette itself are staining, and aside from the phthalo blue, which I purposefully avoided trying to lift if it was ever used since that's a lost cause, I'm fairly certain the answer is no. They're not especially staining colors, if they're even staining at all, really. As for how color lays down on this paper, it's a very thirsty page, which means you don't have a ton of workable time if you want to blend colors on the page and get flat wet on wet washes, but it does mean you don't have to wait nearly as long as normal to put on another layer of color. This can be super handy if you, say, are using a brand like Snellier that really shines when used for glazing or layering purposes. The brand of paint I used for this as well isn't especially well known for jumping across the page and spreading hungrily when used wet on wet, but because this paper sucks up moisture greedily, that capability was stunted even further. This could be a good thing if you love a certain brand but crave more control over its movement, and I'd especially be curious to know if core watercolors had their crazy flow tamed a bit by the characteristics of this paper. If any of you out there just happen to be the magic person who uses high flow watercolors with this specific paper and knows definitively if they're reeled in a bit because of it, I'm sure we'd all love to know. All in all, this paper is good in a Goldilocks sort of way. It's one of those nice middle ground papers that has decent texture but isn't either too smooth or too rough. It's sold at a decent price, which isn't so costly as to make it definitely not worth the price given that it's an okay paper and not an amazing paper but it's also not so cheap as to draw suspicion to itself while you wait to find the catch. I'd say it's light on the sizing department, but actually quite a few of you said you like a paper that works this way, so it's good to know there's actually an audience for this. The one thing that I think holds this paper back slightly is the blocking itself. The glue they use to hold the sheets together is only applied on the long sides, meaning the entirety of the short sides are exposed. That's not really a big deal, though it is slightly unusual given that most companies prefer to cover most of the paper and only leave a sort of keyhole strip for entry. The biggest issue is that the layer of glue they use to hold the pages together is crazy thick. Like, thick enough that there have been times I've used an X-Acto blade to remove a sheet, which can sometimes lead to damaging the paper itself. This is a problem overall with all of the watercolor blocks by Fluid, even the cellulose ones. Some of us have jacked up hands and really, feeling like you have to win an arm wrestling competition with your paper in order to get the next sheet is not always ideal. 
I do think as well that this paper dulls down some of the life from my normally excessively vibrant and glowy Sennelier paints, but not in a super big way. Anything that has a high pigment load like M. Graham or Core or probably even liquid watercolors would still be BAM on the page. In fact, we know from my raccoons painting mentioned in the Meaden review that M. Graham is still crazy vibrant on this paper. Other than that, this is a paper that I recommend, especially in its price range, so it's definitely more treasure than trash. I've got probably half a dozen of the fluid watercolor blocks because I have a bad tendency to start but not finish pieces, and because they're compact enough to keep even in small purses or bags or medium-sized pockets. The price, especially of the cellulose variety, makes them easy to pick up and keep handy for when you just gotta get that doodle out. By the way, I upload every Wednesday unless there's something special going on, and this week there's something special going on. Some of our best friends are getting married, so my hunky and I are going to be scarce. What does this mean? Well, there might not be a video next week on account of me possibly not recording any footage and also possibly being too love drunk to think about editing old footage. Just letting you know in case you're subscribed and have a moment of, hey wait, did I miss Kat's video? Maybe. Nothing set in stone, but if you remember my depression comics, you know that I learned the hard way a very valuable lesson about not stretching myself too thin. Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and happiness. Bye!